at Don in London, it's December the 11th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. I'm an alcoholic in recovery, one day at a time. And the reason why I say it's one day at a time is the only one I can live in. So, in the past, yeah, alcoholic. I don't know when I drew, well, some people say we cross the line when it comes to addiction from not being an addict to being an addict. And once an addict, always an addict. And some say we are recovering on a daily basis, so we start off the day in recovery, and by the end of it we're recovered. And some people believe we are recovered. Well, what other people believe is none about my business in that respect. All I know is today I can be sober. And with a little help from my friends, family, community, professionals, you name it, I will take support wherever I can get it or ask for help where I can get it. And that can be anywhere. But there is a, a consistent part of my life which has developed over the last few years around fellowship. And that fellowship is the one that saves my life or helps me be in recovery one day at a time. And that's Alcoholics Anonymous. And AA uh, is full of unique, authentic people who share their experience, strength and hope where they will and where is it is appropriate for them to do so. And I share my experience, strength and hope here so that you can hear one of many voices around how to be sober. And what I've learned over the years is it is the many voices of sobriety, be they one hour from a drink or 35, 40, 50 years from a drink. We get experience, strength and hope and wisdom of what it's been like and what it is like now. So this is why I do them. It's to share hope with anyone and everyone who may have a problem or is in recovery as they de define it. I can only define it for me. That's the beauty of the programme. We all remain unique, authentic people and we all have our outlook and we all have freedom of choice based on reality. It's not freedom of choice based on fantasy or what we might wish for. We have choices today based on reality, our life experience, and sometimes that is limited, but it can be even more limited with a drink inside me. So how does AA help me? Uh, I share the AA preamble, which is said at every meeting I go to at the beginning, and I was very fortunate to get two to two yesterday. I needed them because of certain writer situations here in London, UK. So this is what AA is and does for me. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And whilst it says quite clearly, fellowship is we leave ev everything at the door in terms of our pol politics, religion, faith. But we do express about it in meetings. But we always say, you know, it's all about sobriety and it's not about anything else. And it's not about somebody putting their view on you. It's about developing our own personal outlook and preference for living. And yes, one or two people picked up on my concern and fears around riots in London. Uh, where the police and students, as young as eight, most around 14 to 16, and some older people, thousands demonstrating about their education fees going up and up and up. And uh, they went down to Parliament Square, their way was blocked by the police, who work on the instruction of the government, and it turned into a riot. And it's very difficult when we see this. I remember I paid a lot of the way to my education over the years and it wasn't a free ride but my attitude is education need to be free and it needs to be free for 50 years so we get the balance back in the system and our culture 
and improve and enrich our society. But that's just me. And uh, when a Prime Minister condemns people for getting angry and agitated when people charge at them on horses, we forget that the Prime Minister is responsible for the actions of the police. He is the one who sets the agenda on that, and he is the one who sets the agenda on making students have to pay 300% more for their degrees. And then he wonders why people get angry. We have a cabinet of multimillionaires, and we have people on the streets with nothing. It's no wonder they feel disenfranchised. Anyway, that's me and my politics coming into my video. And sometimes they will, but you can discount and ignore anything I say, because that's just, you know, my personal view on my outlook. But, you know, fellowship is about something more. It's about emotional and spiritual well-being on a daily basis. And if we're dealing with our emotional and spiritual well-being on a daily basis, it doesn't mean we cut ourselves off from what is happening. We have to deal with what we are experiencing on a daily basis. So, uh, this is not a theory, it's a practice. It's putting things into practice, principles of 12 steps which help me make life work for me and those around me in a more conducive pattern, if you like. It just makes life work. And I don't have to resort to a drink to take the edge off or to get angry or to be happy or sad. I can be happy or sad in reality. And, you know, that is the best experience I can possibly have, reality as it is today. And it, it is called spiritual. That is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. So if you're trying to be a, a spiritual giant these days, the simple way to do it is to be right here in reality, right now. So my emotional well-being is de contingent on my spiritual condition, which is to uh, be able to interact in reality. How else would it be? That's how we were made. But a lot of the time we can be stuck in our history and wonder what's going on and stuck in a fant fantasy of what we would like. So I'm not expecting the political regime to change any time soon and I'm not expecting to change the attitudes or behaviour of, of other people. All I can do is make sure my attitudes and my behaviour are consistent with my values of open, honest and willing. And that's how it works for me. And here I share uh, Daily Reflections, this book, one page a day, a reflection to keep me on message. And these 12 steps of action for uh, anybody in recovery, they're not a burden, they make life ha happier, more livable, more realistic. So December the 11th, a genuine humility, my goodness of genuine humility. Humility is something maybe you didn't hear in what I just said. Yeah, politics takes humility, humility out of us, I suspect. We are actually to practice a genuine humility. This is to the end that our great blessings may never spoil it, that we shall forever live in thankful contemplation of him who presides over us all. And that is uh, an understanding of the higher power of God, or simply good conscience, as you come to understand and it's a personal understanding, it's not an AA understanding. There is no AA understanding as such, because we're unique and authentic. Experience has taught me that my alcoholic personality tends to be grandiose. In other words, I know better than everybody else, but obviously and truly I don't. While having seemingly good intentions, I can go off on tangents in pursuit of my causes. My ego takes over and I lose sight of my primary purpose. I may even take credit for God's handiwork in my life. Such an overstated feeling of my own importance is dangerous to my sobriety and could cause great harm to AA as a whole. My safeguard, the Twelfth Tradition, serves to keep me humble. I realise both as an individual and as a member of the Fellowship that I cannot boast of my accomplishments and that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. And for me, God works through people. God is truth, God is love. And, you know, I can't speak today without reference to the fact that if it hadn't been for an almighty number of people in recovery, I wouldn't have stood a chance to be here today. So, I am always grateful, and I cannot say with any certainty that I would be here had it not been for the fellowship. 
I know everybody else tried to help me and I know I tried to help myself but I couldn't do it on my own and the humility that I've learned in that is it translates into real life I can't live life on my own I can't live as if I know it all I may want a principle of free education but it doesn't mean that everybody else wants that and it's a collective understanding of what is good for us all that we do when we vote in the ballot box but when it comes to fellowship it's about sobriety and if we can all keep sober we can all have a point of view it doesn't mean we're going to get our own way far from it what it means is we have the ability to ex express ourselves truly as we see life today and what keeps me in check if, as if I needed it of course I do I do need it I need humility which is the ability to keep on learning keep on being educated by life and the people around me is the serenity prayer to God or good conscience the God or good conscience that we understand develop an understanding of is a personal understanding unique and authentic to each human but it's so similar it's hard to say if there is much of a difference it's to good conscience mainly so the serenity prayer universal in any situation happy or sad God or to good conscience grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to calm the serenity prayer to God or good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is always for me just for today John in London, hello. It's December the 11th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance was alcohol. My behaviour, cross-addicting, if you like, when not drinking, workaholic, relationshipaholic, collector, obsessive, trying to be perfect. All those things which are seen sometimes as the right things to be striving for and I guess in that whole scenario when I started drinking and it did start very early the first drink took the edge off and made me feel more convivial relaxed joyful happy and every drink after that was all about searching for that place if you like of complete happiness and it didn't work that way because I had to keep on taking more and more and more to find that feeling and eventually it just completely eluded me so I, I went from chasing a dream to being dependent to being an addict and the problem with being an addict is we don't know we are one until we are one it's that awful feeling of needing and wanting and obsession to keep on doing something we know is harming us and self-harm is as bad as self-obsession because we need pain often which then follows another bout of trying to find that feeling again so 35 years of drinking 35 years of workaholic 35 years trying to find the perfect relationship and what happened? I lost sight of the present moment now where I could do something about it so these days in sobriety what I try to do is live with the, the truth of now and sometimes the truth of now is very very difficult so why am I saying this well shares this week in the uh, meetings I go to which help me keep sober that's the fellowship meetings of AA Alcoholics Anonymous has always been has been about reminding me what it was like when I was drinking in those last days how I couldn't stop the fear the putting on a brave face when I tried to answer the telephone tried to open envelopes post tried to answer the front door 
it was very difficult and I couldn't do it these days I can I can do all those things although sometimes I am forgetful and don't do it on time but that's another story the meetings this week all about recovery what it was like and how it is today and even though we can be in recovery some time life keeps on happening and sometimes life is very very difficult and it's brutal because we find ourselves either on our own or in relationships where we're not quite sure or doing something because we think we ought to be doing it trying to prove to the world yet again how valuable we are and we forget that we're just human and we're making progress one day at a time and I say this because it's relevant to me I am just human making making life work one day at a time or rather not trying to make it work live it just live it in this one day and it's hard especially when you've got a few things to resolve on a physical level like me so I've not been able to get about as much as I would like to and that means I haven't been able to do the chairs I was asked to do and that gives me a, a certain amount of guilt because I didn't I didn't share when I said yes by the way I have problems which might be not, I might not be able to get there so I'm learning on a daily basis but a lot of, lot of the uh, sharing recently has been about relationships and how truth is lost when silence occurs and the absolute of anything that is going on in life is about truth so if we can keep on being truthful we have a, a chance to keep things together or go separate ways and I've been hearing this from so many sources that I need to take heed of that and one of the things which is really important in all relationships is love the person for who they are and not what we think or feel they can be so it's loving people as they are rather than trying to change to fit with them or trying to get them to change to fit with us and the downside of that is often if we leave it too long and strive for that perfection we find ourselves broken and alone so the most important thing is truth in the moment of now so we keep on informing ourselves of our situation whether we're singular or together oh I need to get that out because it was bothering me and you know this is not about trying to make a situation right it's about trying to give everybody the freedom to tell the truth and not fear it because if we fear telling the truth we hurt ourselves most and then we hurt others because we just don't share it anyway as you can guess the fellowship of AA Alcoholics Anonymous provides me with learning on a daily basis experience strength and hope and the fellowship in statement of intent goes like this I don't speak for AA and I don't speak for the people in AA because they're unique authentic people who are getting on with their unique authentic lives so this is just me sharing AA statement of intent Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution it does not wish to engage in any controversy and neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety and you know uh, sharing it's a the requirement a desire to stop drinking and then to share the message with, with uh, people that we know in fellowship or as we choose so for me um, sorry that little interruption got to me a bit sharing experience strength and hope I use the literature of AA daily reflections most often here and it's all about the 12 step program and how it works uh, to change our attitude and behavior on a daily basis so I need to refresh my attitude and behavior on a daily basis so not to be perfect but to be able to live in the moment of now and living in the moment of now is crucial because then we can live in the next moment of now more purely 
and with and, and with where we are more informed about where we are and where everybody else is. So the reading for December 11 goes like this: a genuine humility. We are actually to practice a genuine humility. This is to the end that our great blessings may never spoil us, that we shall forever live in thankful contemplation of Him who presides over us all. And that is talking about God. Uh, we all come to an understanding of whether we believe or not. But for me, God is truth, the absolute truth. Not the truth or fiction, I would try and make it so, but the absolute truth of the, what is now. And God works through people, sharing wisdom. And God is love, because love is behind everything, I feel. Experience has taught me that my alcoholic personality tends to be grandiose. While having seemingly good intentions, I can go off on tangents in pursuit of my causes. My ego takes over and I lose sight of my primary purpose. I may even take credit for God's handiwork in my life. Such an overstated feeling of my own importance is dangerous to my sobriety and could cause great harm to AA as a whole. My safeguard, the Twelfth Tradition, serves to keep me humble. I realize both as an individual and as a member of the Fellowship that I cannot boast of my accomplishments and that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. So the truth is doing for us what we could, do not, could not do for ourselves. And for me that is so important to know that there is a higher truth. So when I say the serenity prayer at, my, at the end of my videos is to acceptance and to the God either of your understanding or mine or good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today